This is Dimitri Lascaris for The Real News Network. The Real News is in its fundraising season again, and as a not-for-profit and viewer-supported news organization, we depend on you, our viewers, to provide independent news coverage. And we've been prioritizing reporting on the global climate emergency by establishing a new climate crisis bureau. We ask that you help us to achieve our critical objective of being a leading source of information on the climate crisis uh, by donating to The Real News, which you can easily do by visiting our website. Today, we're going to talk about two important announcements relating to fossil fuels divestment. The World Bank and the world's third largest insurer, AXA, just announced significant divestment initiatives. AXA announced it will divest from coal, tar sands, and tar sands pipelines. Tar sands have been called the dirtiest oil on the planet, and leading scientists have opined that if all of the tar sands were exploited, it would be game over for the climate. Meanwhile, the World Bank just announced that it will divest from upstream oil and gas. Joining us to discuss the significance of these two announcements, we are joined by Alex spears Rush, a climate and energy campaigner with Greenpeace Canada. Alex has many years of experience campaigning for climate action and a just transition to renewable energy. He currently helps to lead Greenpeace's campaign to defund tar sands pipelines. And he joins us today from Toronto. Thanks for coming back on The Real News, Alex. Thanks for having me. So let's, uh, let's start by examining the World Bank announcement. Uh, as I mentioned, the World Bank statement says that the World Bank Group will no longer finance, finance quote, upstream oil and gas. Uh, this is to occur after 2019, according to the announcement. And the announcement also says that in exceptional circumstances, uh, there may be investment notwithstanding this divestment initiative in, uh, in, in upstream oil and gas projects in extremely poor countries. So given the, the, the parameters of this announcement, how important is it from a fossil fuels divestment perspective? I, I would say it's quite significant. So the World Bank is one of the most influential, it's a very influential global financial institution. And the fact that they are making this statement, and this commitment to uh, not be financing or supporting uh, upstream oil and gas after 2019 is a, is a pretty strong vote of non-confidence in the future of the oil and gas industry. Um, and a, a significant recognition that um, investing in, in these kinds of projects doesn't really support uh, development goals and actually undermines them. Um, we'll have to see how they actually implement this, uh, this promise and this commitment, and a lot will depend on the details. Uh, but at that very high level, it, it's, it's a very significant commitment and a, quite a positive one. And so what, what is upstream oil and gas? Uh, how important is that in the overall uh, sort of infrastructure of the fossil fuels industry? And to what degree is the World Bank currently invested in upstream oil and gas? Uh, yeah, so upstream oil and gas generally covers exploration and production as distinct to mid from midstream, which is sort of more the transport side, and the downstream, which is refining and selling the refined products. Uh, so it's, it's a big component of the oil and gas sector, and it's one of the sectors that has uh, some of the biggest environmental impact. And a lot of the fights um, around oil and gas projects deal with upstream oil and gas projects. Um, so those are, you know, open pit mines in the tar sands, drilling in the Arctic Ocean, uh, lots of projects like that. So um, it, it, it is very, very significant. Uh, I can't speak to uh, exactly what the uh, World Bank's exposure is to that sector, um, but it's uh, because of their mandate as a development organization and supposedly they're there to support development, the fact that they are um, saying that they won't touch these projects at all makes a strong statement about what they think the relationship is between and uh, development goals and that, that, that they don't go together and that they're contrary objectives. So let's break down the announce, announcement by AXA. Uh, tell us a little bit about AXA and its importance in the financial industry. What is it committing to do and how important is its announcement? Uh, so AXA is the, the third largest uh, insurer in the world. It's, it's a major financial institution. And uh, they have basically committed to divest from a wide range, well, increase their level of coal divestment and to divest from uh, oil sands and to stop insuring these projects. And it's, it's, it's a very significant move from them because, you know, they're a very big uh, insurer and they manage a lot of assets. And so they're, you know, they have a lot of money that they control. Um, but it's also very significant for the reasons that they've done this. And so what, the, what they have said is that um, in, in a four degree world, you know, th their business won't operate, that the world will be uninsurable. And so it's, it's, it's a, a recognition and it's a positive growing recognition um, from you know, some of the, the, the leading institutions of the global economy that climate change poses a, a serious threat to the global economy and to, to global stability. 
Um, and, uh, you know, so this move will, will send a strong message to the rest of the financial sector. Uh, we're seeing growing recognition from financial institutions of, of these realities and that investments in these kinds of projects are, are bad investments, not only from a, an environmental perspective and in terms of the, the social consequences, but just from a straight up business perspective. And so the AXA announcement came uh, uh, shortly after similar announcements from a number of other French banks, Netixis, Société Générale and Crédit Agricole. Um, and this builds on other announcements that have come earlier this year where they're saying that they won't uh, touch these kinds of projects uh, because of their incompatibility with climate objectives and, and human rights objectives. So let's talk about the Canadian financial industry. Uh, the, the major Canadian financial institutions continue to finance tar sands. Who are the major players in terms of financing the tar sands in Canada? And have we seen any large financial institutions in this country uh, willingness on their part to pursue policies that are responsible from a, a climate ch crisis perspective, and particularly by, do uh, by refusing to finance tar sands projects? Yeah, so the, the contrast between what the Canadian financial sector is doing and what we're seeing from these uh, French financial institutions is pretty striking and uh, pretty uh, disturbing. Uh, all the big Canadian banks are involved in financing uh, tar sands and tar sands pipelines. Um, one of the leaders, though, is Toronto Dominion Bank, and Greenpeace has actually been carrying out a campaign against Toronto Dominion for the past year, and there's a wide range of other groups that are uh, concerned about tar sands expansion and tar sands pipelines that have also been campaigning against TD. And despite uh, a lot of their branding themselves as a green bank and a more socially responsible bank, they are one of the leading financiers of uh, all the tar sands pipelines that have been proposed and tar sands projects in general. Um, and they, they have generally been silent on the issue or uh, stood, stood by their decisions. And it, it is a pretty striking contrast. So we're seeing a lot of financial institutions elsewhere recognize that projects like tar sands pipelines are incompatible with the goals of the Paris Agreement. Um, but meanwhile, we're seeing banks like TD sort of double down and stick by them and contribute hundreds of millions of dollars uh, in credit to helping them get built. Um, and a, a pretty unfortunate thing as well is even some uh, institutions that people might think of as more as progressive in Canada, so Desjardins in particular, Desjardins Group. This is uh, North America's largest uh, co-op federation and a major financial institution in Quebec. They have also been supporting uh, pipeline financing and they contributed $145 million to uh, the Kinder Morgan pipeline out west or $145 million in credit. Um, and and they, they did make some positive or potentially positive steps earlier this year. Greenpeace, we met with them uh, to raise some of these concerns about what they, what they were doing. And in response, they, they launched a moratorium on all their oil pipeline financing investments, was a, which was a very positive step. Um, it was a temporary moratorium, though, while they made longer term decisions about what they were going to do. Uh, we had been engaging with them to try to make that moratorium permanent and adopt better standards to make sure that their lending and investment practices were consistent with uh, the, the goals of the Paris Agreement and broader human rights standards. Um, and unfortunately, they just recently announced that they are going back on their moratorium, that they will continue financing the Kinder Morgan pipeline. Um, and while they have made some sort of broader, vaguer um, commitments, they, they, they don't, um, uh, they're not strong enough to make sure that they will be avoiding these uh, sort of bad projects. So the contrast is, is pretty striking, and that's one of the key areas that we're going to be working on uh, going forward is try to uh, push Canadian financial institutions to um, improve their practices, to stop supporting these bad projects, and um, to, to live up to, to some of the better standards that have been set by other financial institutions. Lastly, let's talk about the Trudeau government. Uh, it continues to support the tar sands industry by, for example, approving uh, the massive expansion of the Kinder Morgan Trans Mountain Pipeline, uh, which you just mentioned. Do you think these major divestment uh, initiatives by foreign institutions and uh, transnational institutions is going to increase pressure on the Trudeau government to uh, at least water down, if not depart entirely from its uh, pro tar sands agenda? I, I, I think it will definitely increase the pressure. I have to say I'm not super optimistic right now, or we, we need significantly more pressure to, to really move the Trudeau government. So, you know, they have uh, staked a lot of their, uh, their political capital on uh, putting forward a climate policy and presenting themselves as taking the climate crisis seriously and, and working to address it. And while they have taken some steps which have been positive, there is a very striking contradiction in their overall approach in that, as you said, while they um, are you know, supporting some action on climate change, there are also very strong supporters of 
uh, the Kinder Morgan Trans Mountain Pipeline and other tar sands pipelines, which as these financial institutions are recognizing are incompatible with the goals of the Paris Agreement. And uh, it really undermines the credibility of the Trudeau government on the climate, uh, on, on climate issues that while on the one hand, they are supporting things like uh, re reducing coal use or you know, supporting the Paris Agreement uh, at home, they are supporting activities which, which undermine those things and um, uh, make, make it impossible to achieve those objectives. Um, and we saw that in a, you know, very, very strikingly recently where the Trudeau government spoke out um, in support of Kinder Morgan um, to, to have the NEB basically um, be able to, to step in to, re to remove uh, local laws or clear the, clear the path in terms of local laws for Kinder Morgan so that they can proceed with construction. Uh, because this had been a, an ongoing issue in, in British Columbia. Local municipalities felt that Kinder Morgan wasn't following the laws properly. And the NEB, while they had put a condition on Kinder Morgan to, that they had to follow a local laws, because of this conflict, they've, they've lifted that condition, basically. And, and the Trudeau government sided with Kinder Morgan. So we're seeing the government flex their muscle to intervene on behalf of these pipelines to support these projects um, that undermine the goals of the, goals of the Paris Agreement. So it, it will increase the pressure on them because it, it, you, you see in more high profile individuals and institutions recognizing uh, this contradiction and uh, taking action on it. Uh, but I think that we will need to see a lot more people speaking out a lot more loudly and putting a lot more pressure on the government before they will, they will break and um, do, do the right thing and, and, and stop supporting these pipelines. Well, this has been Dimitri Lascaris uh, speaking to Alex spears Rosh of the uh, Greenpeace Canada about two major uh, fossil fuel divestment announcements. Thank you very much for joining us today, Alex. Thanks for having me, Dimitri. And this is Dimitri Lascaris for The Real News Network.